Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very live, very real, very on Twitch, this right second episode of Local Chat. Joining me is a new returning favorite for the umpteenth time, Jacob Yosef Terio. How's it going? You can't get rid of me. I'm here forever. He's here forever and also joining us is little baby quiet baby snowflake it's too hot i kill mommy ice cream will crosby that was so mean <laughs> what the fuck? look let's just go right into the chit chat and talk about how we're not live on twitch because i'm the one hosting and i have a problem but i shouldn't be fucking hosting because somebody is making me do it listen saturday I was walking around in the nude, as one does, and I, like, went over to the Nest thermostat, and I was like, oh, that's weird. It's, like, cool in the 74, but it's, like, 78 in here. And then I was like, oh, but maybe it's sunny out. And then I look outside, and it's cloudy. and go, well, maybe it's just the way it is today. <laughs> and so I sit on the couch, and then Karen comes on. I go, Karen, it's hot in here. And she goes, something's wrong. So we go look out to the HVAC, and I hear With that. With the HVAC, H or... Like well, so relationship. It's, it's the what she came home she said something's wrong oh she said something's wrong she left me uh no. um so we went out back and uh to the condenser unit like outside and uh it was just the fan was running mm -hmm. and so she was like oh it sounds fine but as someone who goes in the back often where all my 3d printer stuff is i hear that the compressor going so i knew something was off so basically, long story short, the compressor is dead. Like, pistons, mm -hmm. the guy said he thinks the pistons inside the compressor exploded or something like that. Oh. Um, my landlord Chunky. didn't realize you had to have someone maintain it every year and, like, clear the filters around the boxes because it sucks the air in across the coolant and then blows you know, it You don't have to. I mean, you do. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> no, you don't. It's so, just a normal, it, like, like home AC unit, right? Yeah. You, d you don't. Well, you gotta <laughs> clean the sides if it's, it's like... Caked. Maybe, like, once every, like, four or five years. Well, uh, I'm okay. just saying that, like, I, I took part in a lot of home maintenance because that's how my parents always did it. And they had their AC unit service maybe once every five years, and we never cleaned well, the grills. The HVAC man said it definitely contributed to the choking out of the engine. <laughs> Um, anyways, uh, so anyways, it's completely shot and it's still under warranty, which angers me because it means the new part has to come from the distributor. So, um, hmm. that part was not in order. And so it's coming at the end of the week is what oh. the phrasing was used. So today was the beginning of the end of the week. So, um, hopefully tomorrow, but anyways, we still have our old AC, uh, units from when we lived in Jersey city. Uh, mine's actually from my I grew up with it and the other one's like, like a brand new spanking new window ac units yeah window ac what did i say did i say the wrong thing no you said ac units but see i i have never had to live like that oh, i've always had oh, oh. I've, I've either had central or in beirut they're not uh how do i put this they're not the like third world country. They're not disgusting New York people, so they all have split minis, which split minis are like what we had in Montreal, where there's there's a unit on the outside, there's a tube connecting to a unit on the inside, and the unit on the inside is like a wide horizontal thing on the wall somewhere, and it's much nicer than window units. Yeah, so I grew up with window units, so we have those two window units, one in the bedroom, one in the living room. There's no windows in the office behind me, and I've complained about this before, but my landlord, when the inspector came, he must have said, hey, you need to vent this attic space where the HVAC system is. So he uh -huh. cut a hole in the wall into the room. So, you know, when oh, you know when you so go up into heat. an attic and how hot it is in there, that just so vents didn't, into that room. He, he didn't vent it to the outside and put an attic fan on there? No. Nope. Fucking idiot. I know. So it it um, during the workday, I have this door open with the fan blowing from the living room to try to get some of the cold air in there. And it, it peaks out about 82 in there is where it maintains Jesus it. Yeah. So Christ. I've been working Yikes. in, I've been working like eight to two, two thirty, And then I'll just do like organizing, like write up scripts and VO and stuff in the other room for the rest of the day. But 
Yeah, it, it gets hot in there at the end of a local chat episode, and I don't <laughs> want it to be hot in there at the beginning and the entire <laughs> way through a local yeah. chat episode. I don't know. I mean, if we had a thermometer on screen, it would be pretty entertaining. I, do you want me to go grab the thermometer for you? No, no. I want you to go back to your computer, sit there, close the door, let the, the attic heat the whole room, and have a thermometer on the screen. That's what I want. Um. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Also, the 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 covered uh, fire escape also heats up and doesn't have air flow. So we're actually think I'm thinking of buying a fan and putting some solar cells to just like encourage some airflow out there. A fun um, project that could be yeah. cool. So yeah, I've been living in uh, in heat. Um, can I? Well, temperature heat. Um, temperature heat. Can no, we I turn ask the heat on too, just for fun? <laughs> Can I ask you a question? A question yes. that I have had literally my entire life, and I don't think I've ever gotten an answer to. What does HVAC stand for? Oh, I don't know. Uh, let's look it up. Ooh. If we don't know off the top of heads, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, look, look it up. Yeah, look it up. I Huge think it's, I know a, AC, something. I'm pretty sure it's air conditioning. It is. That's the easy part. Huge uh, volume air conditioning. The H, the H is easy too. I'm looking at it right now. High hydrogen. Hindenburg. No. <laughs> it's easier than that. Hello. What? Did you say human and hello? Hello. Is it helium? <laughs> okay. Um. The H is heating. Heating. Oh, heating. Ventilation. Yes. Exactly. He oh. Heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Mm. That's sense. what it stands I, for. I, do you guys say HVAC or do you say no. HVAC? Well, oh, I say, I say, I say AC. HVAC. If I'm, if I'm, if somebody is talking about the specific thing, but no, I'll use just yeah, AC. Oh yeah, yeah. Unless I'm talking about the unit, I'll say air conditioning. Yeah. I have never HVAC. heard yeah, someone yeah. say all four letters independent uh, of one another every everyone i talk to says hvac that's i don't know if that's weird. a jersey thing are they or fucking what? idiots no, but i just want to scream and throttle them you're friends with criminals <laughs> like why would you just say it's HVAC? not atm machine <laughs> <laughs> it's no it's hvac conditioner right it's h hey uh, can you fix my hvac ac that's like my my friends and i whoever said the atm machine we were playing games and so now I'll say like, um, oh, that's cool AF as fuck. <laughs> or I'll say like, okay, that's TBH good. be honest, man. So you always say okay, like the last annoying. two ones. Yeah. Um, uh, LOL out loud. Uh, so anyways. Uh, that's pretty good. You met that's people who say good. LOL in real life? Once and then I tried Me? not to talk to them ever again. Semi-ironically. Yeah. Uh, if you're doing it ironically... Like when I say no, dope. That, that time's passed. <laughs> LOL ironically has passed. It's not 2005 anymore. <laughs> the troll face called. Ruffle on the floor. <sighs> it's like whenever you meet somebody in real life that you can tell they love Reddit because they have the exact same online and in real life personality and it's just a Reddit person and you're mm. just like, Up man, fuck you. Oh. <laughs> uh. Hashtag winning. Anyways, uh, who put who the fuck put Steam Saw Sale Hall? I'm Steam Saw done. <laughs> hey, it's me. I'm, done. I'm Steam Saw. What do you need? <laughs> Better call Steam Saw. Um, I didn't. Put I, was, on here. I put that on here. I just wasn't sure what people got during the Steam Steam Sale. Nothing. I bought like 15 games. So. I think I I was ready to buy some stuff, but I'm also. I'm, just, I'm saving up. I'm saving up for something that may happen soon. Um, and so I'm trying not to spend money. Switch 2. But I, I did buy... I, I did buy a Switch 2 this weekend. I did. <laughs> I didn't even know they were out, but I was on AliExpress, and I found it. And I was like, <laughs> straight from the source, baby. Um, no, I did buy... I bought uh, Stormworks, which we'll talk about in a little bit. It, 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 I've been looking at it for a while... And it finally hit a moment where I was like, you know what? Pull the trigger. Let's buy it. Actually, I don't know if I bought anything else. Why don't you tell us about your stupid hall of games you'd never play, Will? Oh, fuck off. <laughs> I feel like you do it every time, though, don't you? Aaron, I would rather kill myself than drink that. <laughs> Please. <laughs> you can cut that out. Sorry. No, He's trying no. to hand me a peach seltzer. I do not want a peach seltzer. 
wrong with peach seltzer? Peach is awful. It's almost as bad as mango. It's Thank seltzer, you know. though. There's no flavor. I've been drinking uh, Napoleon's Greatest Defeat recently. Mm. Um. <laughs> Can you? OK, look, for the listener, he is holding up Waterloo seltzer. But I like to think that one of their rivals is called Napoleon's Greatest Defeat seltzer. <laughs> I should wait to make that. And every time I have it on air. It I want to There's... recut the trailer for Ridley Scott's Napoleon movie with a down tempo cover of Abba's Waterloo. Oh, oh that's a good idea. Waterloo. So it's as of this recording, it's not out, but I did cut together a Napoleon Napoleon Dynamite trailer today. Nice. Um and it is hey, incredible. Can I cut in room? Can I cut in here real quick? I did not watch more than a couple seconds of the Napoleon trailer. Have you guys watched the Napoleon trailer yet? Yeah, yeah. I have. How did you feel about it? So I was talking I was talking to Hazel about this. Uh, I feel like Ridley Scott's last handful of movies, with maybe the exception of like Alien Covenant, all have a very similar textural feel to them. Where yeah. it's like he's just kind of making a really long movie that just looks the same as the previous movie, even though it's set in like a different time period or is a different whatever. Yeah. Um, yep. But like I look, I look back to like you know Gladiator, Blade Runner, Alien, these movies that had like very distinct visual styles. It's and gone. Um, his, I mean, he's not making bad movies; they just all kind of feel very samey to me. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what I saw in the trailer. Again, I only watched maybe five, ten seconds of it. Was it looks way too fucking brown. It's it's like, hey, is it is it two thousand six video games again? Because all it is is like brown. And at least got Gears of War. (laughs) And it was just it's just upsetting to me because Napoleon's it's a great story. Um there a, a lot of the napoleonic era as well are these like brightly colored uniforms and it feels like we're just not gonna fucking get that right <laughs> and there's a there's an image going around on twitter which is really good and it's a painting and the painting is napoleon on a horse in front of the the sphinx at giza oh and, yeah and they like and they it, did one for one in camera yeah they, they did a one for one in camera in the movie and you see it in the trailer but in the trailer it's just brown like they just yeah. they just like put a cue on it and just turned it all brown so well, that's it's how upsetting. egypt looks <laughs> no, not it's like how mexico it. it's just like mexico yellow yeah it's just yeah just like anytime yeah. we go you take a camera past the southern border it's just yellow or anytime you, you cut you a to a middle filter. eastern country yeah. it's prayer time so there's always people okay mm-hmm. look i'm just gonna say as somebody Uh-oh. who lived next to a mosque for many years it's always it when I they mean, blare that shit five times a day and it's like two minutes long each and it's very very loud and i to the point that i've memorized it, it it's always prayer time there that's that is accurate <laughs> I, I will say in israel we went through this uh uh islamic town and or settlement uh, and it was up a hill <laughs> in one way winding streets and not one way in the sense that only one car is allowed to go in one direction. It was one way in the sense that only one car will fit at a time. It was a two way street. So we were just like rushing up that while those, the prayer, the speakers were all going off and everything. And I felt like I just smash cut to like (laughs) mission impossible in a, in like a country, whatever. Um, I do want to be very clear. I just, I just want to make sure I'm coming off correctly here. I have grown to love that, and probably at least once a month, I will scream the call to prayer throughout my house oh, uh, it's because it's good fun. Sound. It's in Florida. It's, that's it's very risky. fun. It's very fun. It's like um, um, choir, like church choirs, and like. Do you want to um, hear? I th- no joke. I have like the first ten to fifteen seconds memorized from my from my local recording, and I'd like to perform it for you if I can. I might have to cut this. No, this is not this is not mean in any way. It's just the call to prayer and it's it's so good the recording that played for like three years. And it's okay, here it is. You ready? Every every day, starting at five AM five times a day, and that's opening line was so fucking good that I was like, Hell yeah, baby. 
hell yeah like that guy was fucking getting it it was a recording it wasn't live every day but when he was in the studio that day he was fake he was fucking praising a lot that day man he was killing it anyways Praise sorry you. what were we talking about um so my steam sale <laughs> um, waterloo uh, oh wait wait, wait sorry before we get off napoleon oh, oh there yeah is the most upsetting thing about this that i did not have this realization until 10 seconds ago when i googled it to be sure before i talked about it this is not stanley kubrick's napoleon i thought it was because that script has been kicking around for decades and people have been trying to make kubrick's napoleon script and i thought that's what this turned into but it's not it's not off of kubrick's script mm. and that makes me disappointed mm. i am um, i think the biggest thing as someone who's been recently very interested in napoleonic stuff uh is just seeing it like is like seeing all the uniforms yeah. and napoleon stuff was cool but like this i know at least according to imdb it's centered around his relationship with josephine and all that and like that. i don't care about that there's obviously a story there but then name your movie josephine um I, no, the but, other thing is like it, it's yeah. a movie right and that's a mistake right off the fucking bat because this should be at a minimum a 10 episode miniseries because so much shit happened with Napoleon. Oh, yeah. Like just so many fucking beats and they're just going to have to like either cut and condense it or zoom in on a particular part and you're and you're you're not going to get it, you know, and it could be a great movie, but it's still going to leave me wanting more as opposed to, you know, a multi episode miniseries and it's Apple TV. They could have easily just done that instead. So I started listening to the Age of Napoleon podcast. And I am five and a half episodes in, and the revolution hasn't even started yet, <laughs> um, which is great. Um, have you, have you, uh, Robespierre? Have you, have you gotten to Maximilian no, Robespierre? No, not Ro Robespierre. I remember oh, because he's after the revolution. Yeah, sorry. Well, I remember Robespierre very distinctly from high school and like French Revolution stuff. But uh, coming back it, to it as an adult, is, it's a lot better. Is it because you had the same, you and your friends had the same joke that me and my friends had, which is Robo Spear, and he's just a robotic Frenchman with nope. guillotines for hands? <laughs> no. <laughs> I had a friend named Rob, and we call, is, I called is him Is he Spear, the one so. who's in the painting where he's dead in the bathtub? No, that's Taft. <laughs> I don't think there were bathtubs back then, Jake. Who am I thinking of? I I'm not going to Google this. It could be. Yeah, it could I don't be. Know. R type in death in bathtub question no. mark france yeah question mark, question mark. France. Question mark. but you have to spell out one of the question marks though either one yeah <laughs> it's like those bad email addresses where it's like mike underscore underscore seven spelled out eight <laughs> the number eight. it's just their password yeah they put it in the wrong field uh, oh they fucking do i don't care about it. my scenes at all i don't care I don't want to talk okay. about it. Okay, cool. Uh, so what Jake, I got was... I don't Jake, uh, I just hear... I just see a list of games here called A Lot of Shmups. Oh, yeah. Was this like an, this is like an eBay purchase? It's like cereal. You know, no. two, pounds of, two pounds of shmups for $10? <laughs> no. If this were eBay, this would have set me back like three grand. Um, <laughs> no, I just, after... Uh, uh, for, for those listening, a little bit of the sausage being made, we have a, a, one or two things up in the air in our upcoming stream schedule. And so I kind of randomly filled in and played Son uh, Strikers 1945-2 on stream last Sunday. And uh, I enjoyed it a lot, so maybe we'll keep that going. And so then I was like, hmm, let's just... Let me dig into this subgenre of 90s video gaming. And uh, yeah, I've just been going nuts, downloading a bunch of stuff onto the emulators. Um, and uh, I'm not going to list all of them, but I, I will take questions if you have questions. I see yes. Ian has highlighted one. Yeah, there's a Sonic game in here? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's um, Sonic Wings Special. I think Sonic Wings was the, uh, the arcade version, and then Sonic Wings Special was the PlayStation port. This was made by... I can't remember the name of the developer, but a bunch of those developers Sega. then went on to uh, work at... 
Psycho, the company that did uh, Strikers 1945 and Gunbird, which is another one that's on this list, Um, because it has a lot of the same kind of gameplay and even like graphical assets that Strikers 1945 has, like the power up uh, uh, items and stuff like that, where you're like, that's not, but this isn't from them. Um, No. Oh, I do also want to talk about Star Soldier, which is a vertical scrolling shoot 'em up on the PSP where it actually Ooh. you start the game and then it prompts you it's like hey flip your psp Wait. the other direction how do you how do you hold it i don't know like, like a pringles can <laughs> i'm unsure it doesn't have an actual psp yeah because uh, it's that baffled me too when it like showed me the diagram because it's also it it the version that i have is not localized into english so it's just a lot of characters i can't read um so i don't know how i'm supposed to play it <laughs> But it's a vertical scrolling shoot 'em up on the PSP, played wow. in that orientation. What do you What do you guys think is the optimal? Okay, the thing about vertical shooting, vertical shmups, is that they're not really meant for a normal screen and a normal game system and a normal controller, right? Mm-hmm. So if you it's could meant come to be up, on a cabinet, yeah. But what, what my my question is, if you could come up with the perfect shmup hardware screen screen size the controller controller where is it at what are the button where are the buttons etc what would you think of and i have i have a proposal which is if you go to arcades nowadays you will find uh space invaders and galaga but the way they have it now is on like like an 80 inch screen and you sit on a chair in front of it with like a big joystick and button and so you're just sitting in front of this giant screen playing Space Invaders. I feel like that would be really cool to play a vertical shmup on. What do you guys think? I want it at an angle and slightly three-dimensional, like it's the Star <sighs> Wars opening crawl. Yes. And you're slightly looking down. It's almost at like a like a drafting angle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like that. I want exactly what Jake's saying, but the people who view it from the sides see it like, um, like wireframe, like space science fiction builds so like it's like a pinball table sort of like what jake's saying but you mm-hmm. can see the dimensions on the side angle of all the screens stacked up so it's like a hologram i have i have a crazy one okay you you get into a cockpit and it's a reclined cockpit kind of like a formula one thing where like your knees are at the same level as like your sternum right and then there's like a joystick alien well, I don't know about I Evan Kelly. I can't rem- I can't remember how they were. But yeah, you're like you're basically like almost fully reclined and you're looking over your knees and there's a stick between your knees that you're holding for the vertical shmup. And then above your feet is a cockpit. And then there's like a Pepper's Ghost illusion. So the screen is being projected onto the cockpit glass and you're looking at the cockpit glass to play the vertical shmup and there's like a weird perspective tilt shift to it. I love it. That could be cool. That could be cool. I don't know what a Pepper's ghost is, but you made me think that people should call a sneeze a Pepper's ghost. It's um, it's a thing where you you have a display and you put a glass at 45 degrees above it. And so the the image reflects onto the glass, but you're looking just at the glass. So it looks like it's floating in air. That type of thing. Yeah, I like that. Anyways, vertical shmups. Great genre. We should do the hardware business. For yeah, yeah. for an unspecified amount of Sundays after this, tune in and see me play through this list. When are you gonna play Ikaruga? I'm not sure. I I just I I keep just finding really cool games and I keep downloading <laughs> them and being like, oh, this one's so cool. I have no idea. You're you're turning into me and roguelike roguelikes. And it's entirely likes. possible. Rogue, I've actually roguelike. I've begun working on a on a video script around this experience um so we'll see what comes of them is there a musical segment in the script because i that's that's a joke in my head that i have not said out loud yet but i can just picture it as shmup is (laughs) anyways let me workshop that a little bit more (laughs) i'll be back next week with it there's not Um, currently Anything else you want to talk about, Jake? Um, b- 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 I did this uh, Gunbird. I I definitely want to play on stream at some point because it's a medieval vertical uh, scrolling. Your 
did I get lost? No. Uh, we've got your audio. We just don't have your oh, video anymore. Okay. It's a it's a medieval themed scrolling uh, vertical shoot 'em up where like the bosses are like big knights in armor and you're like a witch on a broom. <laughs> um, wow, it's pretty witch. neat. Raystorm, cool. I think, is is my favorite of the ones I've played so far. That game owns. <gasps> They should make an ass shmup, an auto shooting survival shoot 'em up. <laughs> and <laughs> That's it should a good also be idea. a looter. Ass shmup looter. Looter. <laughs> that's a good idea. Fuck, that's a good idea. Guys, games still, are easy to make. We should make I still, it. I know I'm I make I make the joke in an episode of Play This that hasn't released yet, but I I hate shmup as a genre uh term. Because it just it feels it's, terrible it's to say. I mean it, well, first of all, it's pronounced schmoop. Uh, <laughs> that has even worse mouthfeel. <laughs> it's schmoop. <laughs> I'm just picturing... Okay, I'm going off the deep end here, but you know how people who are like, actually, it's GIF mm -hmm. because the creator of it pronounces it that way? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just picturing there's like a there's like an interview with the Japanese developer, and she's like, oh, does that a schmoop? And it's just like, nope. <laughs> Sorry, it's schmoop. We're not pronouncing it however you pronounce it. A schmoop. Um, anyways, Will, tell us about the games you've been playing. I'm off the rocker tonight, and I'm basically <laughs> sober. I have no excuse. Um, I was playing a lot of Power Washing Simulator. Um, I was super bored after Can finishing... Can I ask a question? What? How are you playing it? What? Mouse and keyboard, controller. Oh, oh, oh. controller. Controller on the Xbox. Seriously. How's, how's that feeling? How's that uh, feeling? It's good because you can, um... I kind of turn it into like I'm controlling a machine and not a person. So yeah. it kind of like works a lot better that way. And it, yeah. it's a lot of sweeping motions and you don't have to be super accurate. So yeah, okay that, that was the, honestly, that was the thing that stopped me from playing the game is I was having fun with it as a podcast game, but I was getting too tired from it too quickly because it was too much sweeping. It was a lot yeah. of just constant mouse motion and that was tiring. So me I, out. I turned the, the, look speed super down low and then they have a button that locks your thing on yes. which is great yeah so i just do that it makes when i actually need to fps it you're just like slowly turning but uh yeah. other than that uh it's great i i bought the um the bikini bottom uh dlc was on sale and i downloaded the midgard bike and the tomb raider thing but i didn't get to those but i cleaned spongebob's street and then the crusty crab the chum bucket oh. uh the best one you got to uh clean the invisible boat mobile and <laughs> it was invisible so like as you're cleaning it you it's just disappearing. The dirt. and that's uh, funny but you couldn't see the dirt through it because it's still like a 3d object so um it was really cool it was fun and and they designed it pretty well where you have like a big one a medium one and then there's like a couple small ones so you don't feel like you're like getting bogged down and I think I'm on the last one, which is Mermaid Man and Saltwater Boy. Saltwater Boy. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Barnacle Boy, thank you. I'm in their uh, lair now, and I'm cleaning that. And I cleaned one of these giant, like, posts holding it up, and I realized I have to clean three more of those, and I really don't feel like doing that, so I've put it down for now. And also, I, I start to get, like, you get bored of it. Um, and I don't know if it's bored or, like, like just like the motion of it i'm like i have to be done with for a bit so i uh -huh. did put it down uh but what i did put down i put it down to pick up um the good old final the sorry the seventh fast fantasy final fantasy mm -hmm. um seven where Guys, are you at now it is one of the best video games i've ever played it's, it's so great. good so it's great i came to i wrote notes but I came to a realization here, which you're probably going to make fun of me for, but I have reasonings behind it. I never realized that the J and JRPG stood for... No, I never realized JRPGs... <laughs> um, my... Gr being a white... No. Um, growing up in my childhood, the very first video game I ever purchased for myself was an Xbox copy of Morrowind. And in Morrowind, you could just go anywhere, do anything. You had the journal, blah, 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 blah. So in my mind, RPGs were that. Like, every RPG is Morrowind. Like, you, you're dumped into an open world. 
you have to figure out where to go blah 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 a blah, crpg blah. a computer rpg it's very open-ended that's it yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah um and so when i went to get into jrpgs i was just like oh i don't want to like walk around an open world and do this like blah blah blah, blah. and so with dragon quest whatever one of that one i played which i really enjoyed the journey of the cursed king it was it was still open world but i kind of got used to it because that one kind of kicks you out of the open world but this game is very linear up front and i kind of wasn't expecting that and it really helped me to just play the game and not be like where am i going next where am I? like i needed a guide maybe once uh this entire time and i looked at it three or four times because i was afraid i was just breezing through it too fast and like missing things but i was really yeah. like the only things i was missing were like the if you want the perfect run and all that sort of stuff uh and then the other thing i'll say the xbox version is great because there is a three times speed so if you click in the left stick it does a three times speed for the game if you click in the oh. right stick it makes all of your characters at limit max so you can constantly use limit breaking moves and all that sort of stuff. Wow. Which is, so it's cheats. No, no, no. So I like I, it. I'm just, let me explain to you first. No. And, <laughs> and then, and then the third one is both sticks turn off random encounters. Um, okay. That's so nice. that's very nice. The nice thing is the, the limit break thing I don't use. They specifically, the person I, whose thing, like I read about it was like, it's great for when you want to, uh, grind and level up and you don't want to baby everything so uh, like that sounds great to me i will absolutely yeah. use it for that using it for like things if i was on the, like the 10th version of a boss fight and i can't get through it i might consider using yeah. it but i haven't touched yeah. it in like main main sort of game the no encounters thing's great because when i just want to get to a space i'll hit that and then the three times is great for like if i reload something or i want to get through something um or i'm running through whatever so that's great as well Okay, that brings me to my notes. Um, first of all, you haven't you haven't answered. Where are you at in the game? Uh, I'll get there. Uh, I just left Midgard. I am f like okay. five and a half hours in. Okay, all right, I got you. Um, there's a lot of notes here. Uh, I just noted that the train stuff at the beginning was very cool, uh, and yeah. the fact we talked about this a little bit, but you nuke the reactor. I also noted that the characters' names are Biggs and Wedge from uh red team red yeah red team it's the opposite star wars got it from final fantasy oh <laughs> yeah right you're right you're definitely right um i really like the design the first reactor that you go through the whole tutorial you then go do a second reactor and you just know where to go because you're just redoing the tutorial it's different but it like mm -hmm. taught you that and i thought that was very interesting and great um there's a you dress up as a woman at one point which was very funny um yeah. you can maximize that in different ways to like be the most attractive woman uh they allude to cutting ripping and smashing the man's penis off which i also thought was very funny uh, as a good bit there's a lot of good like bits in this yeah. game yeah it's funny yeah um and then they just kill like seven thousand million people when the giant plate falls <laughs> and I yeah. was, I just like stood that game. there. I was but, like, but holy like, shit. But like from the start, the game is like, yo, we got evil corporations and we're fucking terrorist. And they're in, like, it's dark from the start. Yeah. They do a good job of, of leavening that with bits, but it's still dark and which is great. Yeah. Heavy themes. Um, then there were stairs. If you just decide to sneak into the, uh, Shinra company that stairs bit is hilarious the stairs bit yes. i thought something was broken i was like <laughs> how is this still going on <laughs> and then yeah, I, I was about that. to google it when i reached the top um that's yeah the stairs bit is so fucking funny um <laughs> they complain the entire time um it also uh the stairs was funny the no head boob lady was gross um the president a house yet president fought died yes i bought one of those houses sephiroth sephiroth is from this game i did not know yes. that that's incredible wait, wait so you do you know what happens in this game do you know the big I spoilers have no and idea. stuff i have no idea i have Guys, no idea is, what happens in this video game. this is this is gonna be great this is gonna be great you have to finish this game yeah currently currently 
Um, currently, Trash Can, Randy Newman, Sandwiches, Lasagna, and Napoleon B have escaped from Midgar and are out in the Wait, wild world. You renamed all of them? It asks you to. Why would you not? <laughs> because the game is such a classic that you're going to have trouble having conversations with people. Then don't ask me to change the character's name. You're gonna I'll be like, say this God, every Barrett single time. is Barrett is the coolest. Randy character. Newman, please, is his name. Jesus Christ, <laughs> you disgust me. And his wife, sandwiches. She's weird. Um, not his. Tifa's not his wife. Oh, I thought sandwiches was his wife because they have the daughter Marlene. I thought they were married. Oh, well, I don't. No, I think I think Marlene's like a stray or something. Uh, I don't know. Well, lasagna's great. Um, God damn it. <laughs> and then Napoleon B uh is a is a animal who talks. Just give her a Um Yeah, I'm 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 really glad you're enjoying it. I I dropped off probably another five, six hours from where you are, but it's because I got to a part where I was underleveled and I would have to grind and then I was like I didn't I didn't have the cheats you have, so I was like shit and I dropped it there, but I was thoroughly enjoying it up to that point. Yeah, it's ripping. Like I keep going back to it. It's great. Uh, basically, my entire week and weekend, other than work and heat exhaustion, have been Count of Monte Cristo and Final Fantasy VII, and just waffling back between those two. Um, the last thing I want to mention: the fucking motorcycle fight out Pretty of cool. Midgar was awesome because they're like, "Oh, you hit your enemy." On this side, hit your enemy on that side, and they're like, just go. And I was expecting it to be really annoying and stupid, but you can also like hit the guy on the motorcycle and they'll like wobble and fall down. And like there were just yeah. like you never felt like you weren't getting the hits because even if you didn't hit the guy, you would knock into him and he would wobble and fall. Um, and then the cutscene right before that, I it it's like they use stop motion. It's so weird. The like animation style of these yeah. characters like not the in-game ones but the, the pre-rendered ones it's just fascinating to watch i was so I, engrossed I, th I, I think they just couldn't i think they just couldn't hit a steady frame rate for the cinematics on the, the playstation yeah i need to check what rate those are playing in because because now like... that i think about the ps1 i think that's really what it is is that they had trouble playing videos so three three times speed when i accelerate it to that the game looks like it's running in 60. Um, so huh. I, I wonder if I, I mean, it's probably running at 60 normally on the Xbox, but I wonder if the game's emulator frame rate is like 20 or 30. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you a question. You just left Midgar. My understanding is that the Final Fantasy VII remake is just up to that part. That's insane to me. I mean, I played five, six hours of it. They add a lot of stuff. It's 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 nice. It, I just wasn't super into it. What are your thoughts right now? Because I know you have a compulsion with playing games and similar games back to back and back, etc. Do you think after you finish Final Fantasy VII, you're going to roll into the remake? I had this thought today because part of me was like, oh, what if I stop here and then go play the remake? Because the remake go ends picks up, when they yeah. leave it at, but I, I think i'm going to keep playing this until i tire of it i'm i, yeah. I want to get through it my 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 um my reward for beating this game i was telling myself would be i would then review it with the new review system um, <gasps> as a treat i hmm? forgot to do that game. oh well uh, no Let's no I, I i didn't ask jake because he had just done it last week i didn't want to double jake it that's fair <laughs> And since I he don't was want to double last, Jake it. Last person I asked. Let's get um, pins I, made that say that. <laughs> I will say, I will say though, just to top off the original versus remake discussion, as somebody who has played basically the same amount of time of each of them, which is roughly like seven to ten hours of each of them, they are they're different games. I can't say completely different simply because yeah. the story and the characters are similar, but the remake is so different. In terms of gameplay, the stuff they've added, how you're going through it, the world, how you're interacting with the world, etc., that they are they are different games. So if you if you want more Final Fantasy VII and and more, not even in the context of I want the same, but I want more of this world and this etc., remake is a good thing to roll into. Yeah, I, I'm definitely gonna hit the remake. I'm I'm really loving what I'm playing now, 
And like I said, now that I've kind of changed my perspective on like what an RPG is, it's been playing a lot better. Not that it was a hindrance before, but I just like feel more like I can not like panic about every single decision. And also the, the combat is a lot. I've gotten a lot more used to it um, because I think the first time I played it, I was trying to not pay attention to the combat. And now I sort of am. And I rarely lost, had a character go down um, yeah. or any of that stuff. And Materia, like I'm, I'm, I'm playing with that system a little bit. Um, it's a little archaic, um, but the, I feel like some of those screens give you just enough. Uh, I will say the classic Final Fantasy blue and white screen makes me immediately think of RPG Maker every time I see that screen. Yeah. And I just, I'm just like, oh, this is a shit game. <laughs> like, oh, this yeah. game looks terrible because it just looks exactly like that with the portraits. Um, but I'm having fun. I, hopefully I'll finish it. Uh, yeah, who knew Final Fantasy VII was good? I didn't. Nobody told me that. Nobody. What'd you play? It's kind of like, uh, last night I watched Roadhouse for the first time. Patrick Swayze? Yeah, nobody told me how good that movie was. Nobody ever talks about it. Uh, I won't go too far down that tangent, but it's it's absolutely one of those moments where you're like, you know of something, and you're like, maybe it's not for me. I know people say it's great. Maybe it's not. Maybe, and then, and then finally, 33 years into my life, I'm like, okay, fine, I'll watch it. And then you're like, fuck, that was good. Holy shit. <laughs> Anyways, um, I've been playing two games. Uh, first one is medieval dynasty uh it is a it's a prequel to duck dynasty i was uh, about to make the exact same joke <laughs> was that that was his was that history channel or a and e i believe it was on discovery oh maybe discovery they're I'll all the same up. now um one of those duck dynasty guys is in god's not dead yeah i can see that dick dynasty only one of them though I, I think, think, I think it was only one blue. of them. I only recognized one of them. What's Hazel and I binged down? one and two a, a couple of weeks ago, and they're <sighs> that's some wild filmmaking, folks. I oh. bet. I oh, bet. My. Are you not familiar with Duck Dynasty, Will? No, and you're I googling was googling it for the first the, time. The, no, no, no. Am I not? Quack, quack. I'm a duck boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never seen an episode, but I know what it is. Um, <laughs> I like didn't realize one. Uh, their show ratings dropped. Because one of the people air, publicly aired their views on homosexuality and pre civil rights, but but it was Which their pro homosexuality, so the ratings dropped, right? I don't think it was. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, uh, so look, I've recently come to the conclusion that I am a sucker for well made TikTok ads, fake ads, or uh approvals of video games and so i was talking the other day that's what all the cool kids are doing sometimes they're ticking sometimes they're talking and <laughs> the fuck's wrong with me and uh this one of them was like hey if you like survival games you should totally play this game out it's called medieval dynasty and basically it is a survival game kind of like uh, honestly kind of like what you would think arc survival evolved is but good where you're first person you're running around in like a realistic graphically realistic place and you're collecting uh materials and you have to like take care of your water and your stamina and your your hunger and you need a place to sleep and all this stuff but it's medieval so it takes place in like the 1500s i think in like poland or something and um it has a, an ai system in it so like you go to the local town and you meet some people that are like friends of your your dead relatives and, and you're talking to them and they're like, hey, go set up, go set, go build your house somewhere. And you can just literally go anywhere and build your house in in this like little valley, which has like four or five villages. Um, and you build your house, but then you keep talking to the locals and through that and some of the skill trees and tech trees you start to see, you realize, oh, shit, I can build my own fucking village. And you just like you just build a house and then you go talk to somebody and you're like, hey, you want to come join my village? And they're like, yeah, sure. So then they come join your village. And like the best way that I can describe this is, uh, Will, I know you will know the answer to this. What is the very first little tiny riverside village that you go to in Skyrim? Oh, white, not white run, um, not white run. Oh, God. Oh, river, not river run. 
River. Uh, yeah, no, maybe River, River, River Home. Cindy River. Loppers let the river run. Anyways, it's basically that little village. And there's like multiples of them around and there's people in them. Sorry, Carly Simons let the river run. Yes. And then, but you're also going off to another part of the valley and building your own version of that. And so you're like running around chopping down trees, like collecting logs and then collecting straw from the river so that you can use that to thatch the roof. And then you're like setting up rabbit traps and then you're like crafting a wooden spear so you can throw it at boars to get them for meat. Um, and it's pretty fun. I've probably played like four or five hours of it over the past week. Um, it's on game pass came out this year. I I would say if you're into any sort of like survival game or medieval game, or even like a, like, like literally I'm going to build a medieval village and I'm going to know all my villagers and give them jobs. Like you are the hunter. Um, but you're playing it from a ground level. So it's not like an, it's almost like you're building a village RTS style, but hands on FPS. So you're having to run around and hammer all the buildings together. And when you want to manage people, you go and talk to them. Um, I do have some problems with the game, though, which is that there's a lot of mechanics in the game. And I don't think they do a good job of explaining all of them. Um, Which is weird because there is a decent lengthy tutorial in the game. And they do have like a knowledge page and they do have a bunch of info text in the game. But something as simple as like, I got my first villagers and they showed up and all of a sudden I had these icons on my screen and it was like, it was like water and it was like a red water icon and it had a three underneath it. And I was like, I think my three villagers are thirsty. (laughs) And so then I built a well in the town and the well's there and I know I can drink from the well and I know there's a river there that I can drink from too. And my villagers weren't drinking. And I tried looking through the game and stuff and I couldn't figure it out. I ended up just having to Google it. And it was like a little complicated, etc. So it's it's a lot of stuff like that where as you start to get into the game and you get to this complicated stuff, it doesn't do a good enough job of describing it or giving you that information. So it's definitely one of those games where you're having to, you have to start pausing the game, opening Google and going, Medieval Dynasty, how do I feed my villagers? You know, and it's like, well, it turns out you have to go to their home and put food in their chest and then they will know to go to their home to get food from their little wooden chest in their house. You don't hand it to them. You don't put it in a central place, etc. Anyways, um, but it's pretty cool. It's on Game Pass. I would say if you're at all interested in those types of games, it seems like a solid one. I mean, as somebody who typically doesn't like those games that much and absolutely hated Ark Survival Evolved, which is very popular, this is better than that. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Do you guys have any interest at all in this game or have you heard of it before I brought it up? I've not heard of it from you describing it. I, I probably won't play it. <laughs> That's fair. Um, it's been on my wish list, Steam wish list for like two or three years. Um, and I've never wanted to buy it, but I did see it was on Game Pass whenever it was added like a month ago. And I was like, oh, I should play that. Uh, I do not have time in my life for that. Um, so I will check it out now because that's exactly the type of game I like. <laughs> Yeah, and it may be out of early access. And I'll say, even with the the complications that I had and eventually dropping the game, I still got like a solid five, six hours out of it this weekend. Just going around building houses and stuff. Is there a multiplayer? Yes, I believe there is. Your, your Your gate blocked all of that. Okay, uh, next game I played um, is Stormworks Build and Rescue. You guys heard about this game? Only when you said you were going to stream it. Okay, I, Will's excited. I, 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 I own this game, I think, and I've played it like for like three or four hours, but I do not remember anything about it. Maybe, maybe that's how I've played it before was through your library, because somehow I have played it. A couple years ago but anyways um look fuck you this is another tiktok game all right i kept seeing it on tiktok and i was like okay i'm finally gonna play this game uh and it was on steam sales like 16 17 bucks um best way to describe this is it's like a disaster simulator where there are disasters happening in the world it's it started out as a 
boat heavy game but eventually they added planes and land vehicles and stuff but the the premise is that basically you have to go rescue individuals so like people are like hey i'm stranded on my boat in the middle of the ocean or hey i crashed my boat and it's on fire or like hey there's a plane crash we have to go to this island to so pick calm. up the plane crash survivors and turn the fire down or whatever that's what you can turn the fire down um <laughs> yeah, the big knob that says fire yeah but the thing is you are not at least from what i can tell you're not really given vehicles so it's not like i'm gonna unlock the fire truck it's like no fuck you build your own fire truck and i was like okay i like kerbal i like you know uh other voxel based games where it's all about building vehicles out of bricks and stuff and i was hesitant because this game looks a little wonky but seeing some of the things that people were doing like crazy vehicles and stuff and then reading the reviews people were like hey this is like a really complex voxel builder and it's a little hard to get into but once you get into it it's rewarding and so i was like fuck it yeah let's do it and um they weren't wrong it's complicated part of it is the controls a large part of it is this game is simulating a lot of fucking physics and mechanics that I was not expecting. Uh, give you an example. I spent the first three hours of playing this game building a car. And when I say building a car, I mean a platform with wheels and an engine that I could get into, turn on and drive straight and turn left and right. And it took me three hours to build it because Unlike Kerbal or uh, um, I can't think of other Voxel building games, but unlike all those others where you're like, I want an engine and then you just like plop an engine down uh, like scrap mechanic. You just plop an engine onto, you know, your vehicle and boom, you have an engine or, or some of them that are even just like put wheels on it, you know, Tears of the Kingdom, put wheels on it. Now you can drive it. Um, nothing against that. But in Stormworks Build and Rescue, when I built my first car... I had to place an engine. I then had to place a radiator. I then had to plumb coolant pipes in and out to the engine. I then had to place a fuel tank, plumb to the fuel tank and the engine. Then I had to uh, also plumb an exhaust system and I had to plumb uh, an intake system. And then I had to attach a, a drive shaft and then I put a clutch on it. And then I also had to put a gearbox and then I put the wheels on it and I had to tweak the gearbox ratio. And then I also had to put down a seat that I can sit in. And then I had Plum to yourself. put, I had to put a battery and I had to put uh, an ignition key so that I could turn the whole system on and connect to turn on power for the system. And then I had to put a push button tied to the starter on the engine. And then I also had to put a dial for RPM and a dial for temperature. And I had to tie all those to the engine and say, this dial's for temperature. So put the temperature value there. And it was pretty complicated. Um, and it was kind of rewarding literally after three hours that I finally get this vehicle that I'm able to sit into it. It turns on, the engine is running and I have the proper gear ratio that I can move the car forward without the engine stalling or the tires just spinning. Um, and it was, it was pretty cool because as somebody who's worked on a lot of cars in real life, like Pardon? there's, there's enough like depth here that i was literally being like what's the normal gear ratio for like a low rev engine and i was like okay uh i need to like what's the best way to put my radiator etc um so more, it's pretty crazy plums than little jack horner <laughs> is that what and you were so, googling yes <laughs> is, is what, what plum did means? you not watch puss in boots plum no means? i did and i was like what is that guy's name i can't uh, remember <laughs> Ian. You should play My Summer Car because I think... I was going to say, this sounds like My Summer Car. It it does, and I've played a little bit of My Summer Car, but this one is more... Customizable. In My, in my Summer Car, yeah, I don't even want to say customizable, but it's more demanding. Because, for example, they have a whole modular engine system where instead of... You can, you can either choose like a small, medium, large engine and then have to attach all this stuff to it. Or you could do a modular engine where you're literally putting down like, I want two crankshafts and then I need two compression systems to it and I need an intake inlet here. Like you're building the individual components of the engine. Here's the problem though. Here's why I stopped playing this fucking game. It is a complicated system and it does fuck all to help you. It does fucking nothing to help you. And so I'll, 
I'll give you an example, like Kerbal. We all love Kerbal Space Program, right? It's fantastic. Silent knots, great. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, the thing about Kerbal is you can fuck up pretty easily, but they have like RCS, they have SAS, they have like built-in stabilizing mechanisms. They have things where if you start going too fast, it'll like flash a message on the screen and be like thermal overload, like you're getting too hot, you know? An like, unknown they have some... number of the Kerbal scientists were formerly in the Nazi party. Exactly. <laughs> but but them. it's good because they know how to build good rockets. So they're constantly telling you that. So even when you're fucking up, you can still kind of see, oh, I know where I'm fucking up. It took me three hours to build my first car because I couldn't get the engine working at first because I didn't have it connected properly to electricity or whatever. And they have little things like if you put down a dial and you forget to connect it to a battery, it'll like have a little icon being like, there's no electricity to this part. But if you fuck up the electrical connection to your starter or like you don't have coolant attached to your engine or whatever, it doesn't fucking tell you. So you like you spawn it, you run 20 feet, you get in the vehicle, you try and crank it and it just goes like crank, 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 crank. And you're just like, I don't fucking know what's wrong with this. Right. And then I finally get the engine running and I go to drive the car and I, I turn the engine on and it's like, and I find like, great fucking 20 RPM, like coolant's great. I'm doing great. I got battery charge and I press the W to go forward and it goes, and it like stalls itself every time I move forward. And then I had to go to fucking Google and be like, why the fuck isn't this working? They're like, oh, it's because your engine's directly connected to your wheels. So you need like a gearbox in order to get like the right gear ratio. Otherwise it's just going to stall itself out. And I'm like, okay. And I finally get a gear ratio that kind of works. But if I go too fast, as in like more than 10 miles per hour, it stalls out again. I go online. People are like, oh, it's because it's like a car. So you need five gears. So you need literally like five gearboxes in a row and you need to change the gear ratio on each of them and do the multiplication and then tie them each to a button so that you can change gears as you're moving. I'm like, fuck you. Like, that's cool. That's in the game. But don't force me to fucking do that. And don't fucking not tell me that when I'm sitting here like an idiot for an hour trying to drive my stupid car and it will work. That's the problem I have with this game. Is it's complicated, which is cool, but they do fuck all to help you. So fuck that game. I'm getting upset. It's <laughs> George is upset. I gotta go back and rewatch the stream now. It's a, it's great. One of our greatest streams. Uh, fuck this. Let's talk about the news. Just just kidding. Let's talk about wishlist spotlight. Wait, what stream? Did you mention the stream? Did it Ian did. not stream Stormworks on Tuesday? Oh, sorry. Oh, I, forgot, I thought I you meant this stream. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. I will I wasn't say, attention. you could probably have a solid two, three hours of fun in that game just loading community vehicles, which I did the other day and is kind of fun. Yeah. But don't expect to be productive or create your own vehicles in that game. It's it's <laughs> just to too fuck you to the user. Um, let's talk about Wishlist Spotlight. Who put this on here? Who put, who put this on here? It's did well, I put it on here? No, I put it on it here. I just don't want to. I just don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> you want Anyways, this is called. It? Uh, I'll I'll just pitch it real quick. It's called Desynced. It. I saw this because it, I believe it was on a Reddit post, and they said it is a beltless automation game. I was like, oh, like Factorio is so popular that a lot of games nowadays are all about conveyor belts, but this one is more about it looks like drones or just ethereal connections between buildings so you're putting down buildings is so it's a strategy game with customizable units and behaviors you're still doing like a gather build research but you're also setting up factory systems but without the conveyor belt and i think that's where the desync comes in is that you kind of have an ethereal connection between the buildings look it's it's close enough to factorio that this game looks <laughs> cool right will you getting excited about this game I was just lost in, lost in its majesty a little bit. Anyways, that's desynced. Comes out on August. Uh, on August 15th. I think it's an early access. August 15th. There's a demo available right now. Cool. So. Let's go to the news. It's time for the Will, you want to pick a, a news story to talk about? Yeah, I want to talk about Bungie Win. Oh, 
uh, Bungie because versus I it, because I harassment. I don't um, like this story. Why not? I think it's great. It's a company celebrating like a civil victory against an individual for five hundred thousand dollars. But was the guy was like like had found out like the community manager's actual address and was like sending stuff to it. Like th that is absolutely messed up, but why can't you go to the police for that and make it a criminal matter? Why does it need to be a civil matter? I can't speak to that. Yeah, I don't know what either of those words mean. I also aren't <laughs> going to talk about the story cuz I'm uh, not logged into Twitter. And Okay. Uh, oh yeah, you can't so look at tweets anymore. I can't look at tweets anymore. So I will oh, talk about wow. the uh the new study from video game uh uh, History Foundation. Um, oh yeah, this was nuts. Who one of their magazines I was just looking through today and writing games down. Uh, they did a um, study here that reveals that eighty seven eighty seven percent of uh God of classic video games released in the United States are critically endangered. Um, this being uh, a survey conducted from nineteen sixty to two thousand nine. And uh, also, according to this, uh, just just thirteen percent of video game history is being represented in the current marketplace. In fact, no period of video game history defined in the study even cracked twenty percent representation in the current market. Uh, I believe I don't know if it says this here explicitly, but this does not include like archive.org and this is like specifically companies oh, yeah, yeah. offering. Yeah, this video is games. can can you legally purchase the game yeah. to play today? Um, and they had a great. I really thought this was a powerful opener for this like little mini blog, which was saying it's like if the only version of Titanic you could legally buy was the VH digitization v, VHS copy of the Titanic movie. And that was the only one you could get anywhere. And you'd have to get bootlegs of like the Blu-ray copy or the 4K copy. It's fine. I got two VCRs, baby. <laughs> no, you don't get a v VHS tape. You get a digitization of the VHS tape. Um, yeah. Uh, there is I... a longer, um, there's like a quick fact section. Uh, I read about half of it. There's a longer study uh, written by Phil Salvador, um, who uh, recently joined them, used to do the uh i can't remember the name of the website the odd games that i used to pull games from him for uh when we did scan line um he would write about weird games uh it's a really cool study 87 percent. 87 percent. i would genuinely be curious um which it seems like an impossible study but what percentage are just not available like like, like there's yeah. not even like a ROM or an ISO available yeah. anywhere. There's just like a a, a listing right. for the game, but you can't actually play it. Like including yeah. archive.org and everything. Is it at ninety? Is it at eighty five? Is it at ninety nine? Like Yeah. I'd be curious about that. Um obviously there's always it's not gonna be a hundred because stuff is always missing, but um yeah, I'm curious. It makes uh, me this want to Oh sorry. Yeah. Please. Uh, it makes me want to, <laughs> when I was looking into getting ROMs for my Retroid Pocket Flip, uh, I came across some forum posts from a couple years ago of people being like, I have a complete collection all the way through PS2, and they were at like 20 petabytes, and it makes me kind of want to do, do that, like, <laughs> like hard drives are pretty cheap nowadays, and I... I could, I brought, I could, uh, they were having like, you can get, fuck, I think you can get like a 16 terabyte platter for like 200 bucks now. Well, it was, it was just within the last couple of months before the eShop went online, was it the completionist who had went and like yes. bought the whole yeah. 3DS yep. eShop? Yeah. So there, there's part of me that is like the way that you fight this is the way we've always been doing it, which is burn copies keep them and share them not in a piracy manner not in games that just came out like tears of the kingdom but it is always good a generation or two after the launch of something to get those those rom pack pack rats 
who just start collecting all this shit and burning stuff, digitizing it as needed. Um, so God bless those folks, because that's really how you play a lot of these old, these old games now. Yeah, good for them. Um, but yeah, study's crazy. Remember, uh, I think they're going to take some appeals uh, in 2024 for the DMCA stuff, which is when it's next up for revision. Um, donate to the Video Game History Foundation. I give them money and they send me a magazine every month. And I was looking through a magazine today and I wrote down like 15 games because it's a great way to see games that nobody talks about anymore, but were like yep. solid yeah. eights back then. And you're like, this, like Alundra 2, fantastic video game, solid eight. Um, yeah. Don't blow your nose. Oh, you did already. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, that's my news story this week. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, it was a pleasure. Yeah, fuck off. Jake, tell me about oh, Microsoft I, Activision I'm, Blizzard uh, King. I'm not, I'm, a, I'm unqualified. I just know that it's happening. It's happening. I, I'll give the quick primer here, which is basically there was a court case uh, for the FTC to block the merger. Um, we're rapidly approaching July 18th, which is the deadline to close the deal, according to the original agreement between Microsoft and Activision Blizzard King. So there was a bit of a deadline. FTC court case going wild. We had a decision the other day, which is that the uh, judge decided against the FTC and said there is no reason to stop this merger from happening. Uh, rough paraphrase there. Uh, the FTC has filed an appeal, but they are up against the clock. Uh, so the way I understand it is basically the 18th is the merger deadline. Microsoft and Activision Blizzard King really want to get it done by July 18th, which is Monday, a couple days from now. Um, once Tuesday. it happens... Is it Tuesday? Can't remember. Yeah, Tuesday. Uh, you're probably right. Yeah, you're right. Um but the problem is it, once once they merge, it's not necessarily that it's irreversible. It just becomes a lot more difficult for a government body to come in and then try and pry them apart after the deal is closed. Tangled web um, we weave. Because of yeah. So the FTC then filed an appeal yet last night, I believe, basically saying, hey, we're going to appeal the decision to the Ninth Circuit Court. And we're going to ask that you put an injunction in place to prevent them from merging before the 18th, really before we get a decision on the appeal. And just a couple hours ago, the original court judge came down and said, no, I'm not going to grant that injunction. Your appeal can go ahead, but I'm not going to stop the deal from happening. Um, I so need right to now, go all the way. I need to know Brett Kavanaugh's thoughts on the Xbox. I had two Game Pass games. It still can. It still can. But I, I, I don't know if you guys were following closely, but the FTC's case was very weak, and they leaned heavily into basically just using Sony as witnesses and using all of their arguments, and the judge saw right through it and was like, no, 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 no. Like, like this deal is bad for Sony, but you're not proving that it's bad for consumers. <laughs> And the and the deal had and the the judge had these moments where where she was like wowed by Game Pass. She's like, wait, you get all that for like fifteen bucks a month? Like these weird little quotes where it was like, yeah, it's a good deal for consumers. Uh, but anyway, so where we are now is that uh, the only real obstacle left for Microsoft Activision Blizzard King merger is the CMA, which is the Competitions and Mergers Authority, I believe, uh, for the UK. The, the Country Music Awards for the UK, they uh, filed to block the merger, but that they only have jurisdiction over the UK. They had uh, sued to stop the merger, and there was pending litigation. Uh, but as soon as the FTC loss came down, the CMA and Microsoft agreed to suspend the legal works and start negotiating. And so the CMA is still a little bit petty about it, but the current rumor as of an hour or two ago is that Microsoft is going to lease out or sell the rights to their UK cloud streaming because the CMA, their main concern was cloud streaming. And so Microsoft is going to say, fine, we won't make money and we won't control Xbox cloud streaming in the UK. We'll sell it to some other company and they'll take care of it for us and they'll make the profits. Um, so it sounds like that may be the, uh, 
the um the given but it sounds like regardless of that as of last night nasdaq published that the activision stock ticker will no longer be available i believe on monday <laughs> so microsoft and activision are moving full steam ahead they are probably going to close this deal either over the weekend or on monday um so it's what, happening folks what happens to my one stock i genuinely don't know of activision does yeah, it become microsoft the day they announced the deal went know. through uh my phone kept going off because robin hood kept being like your stock's up your stock's up yeah, yeah. i bought it for think, 66 dollars, and it's at 90 now i think i think it went up like 10 percent the other day because of the the Ooh. announcement so long story short it is not official yet but a vast majority of the hurdles have been cleared. There is one minor hurdle for the UK market, and we could very, very likely next Thursday be talking about a finally closed merger between Microsoft and ABK. How do you guys feel? Are you excited? I'm excited I, I, only uh, in the sense that I get to that. Please put Call of Duty on game pass so i could finally replay them all but did you, I've been waiting did you for see like three years. but did you see in the court docs apparently there was this thing it's not it's not official it's not written in stone but there was a line saying that call of duty games would not come to game pass until 2025 no it's it just, was not set in stone so they could but change maybe that they, but they was, might have meant new call of duty games. i don't yeah, care about they could new have. call of duty games just give yeah. me old call of duty I, games I want to play Call of Duty 1 again. That one's fantastic. I, do I want to play yeah. 2 and 3 and 4. I'm, uh, I, I'm, go ahead, Jake. No, I was going to say, I'm torn between, obviously, the game enjoyer in me, who's like, oh, yeah, more cool games are going to come to Game Pass. And then the other side of me that's like, but having, you know, six companies own all media is no bueno in the long run. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I think uh, I've talked about this before, but I think the reason why I am in support of this deal is that Activision, Activision is in a terrible place right now, right? They're mm. sitting on all these great IPs, but they have been squandering that recently with some terrible design decisions and release decisions and game decisions, aka Overwatch 2 and Diablo Immortal, etc. and Diablo 4. Um, where they're just not really delivering on the IPs anymore. They're bleeding talent, and the talent that they do have left are just literally being harassed on a daily basis and are in a toxic workplace. So Activision Blizzard either needs to die for the sake of the IP and the industry and the workers who are there, or they need to be consumed by somebody else. And I think... Between the two options, I would rather have them consumed by a benevolent company. And I know it's weird to say that, but I, I do view Xbox as a benevolent entity in the in the game space right now. They pushed forward with subscription based gaming, and it is a lot fucking better as a consumer nowadays that we have that. There's there's no denying that. So I as as much as I want to agree with you and say like you know, mergers are bad, consolidation's bad. I think this is a rescue, you know, of taking in a badly beaten puppy and they're going to a good home. Um, could Microsoft take that puppy and no, but could Microsoft uh, theoretically when they buy, do they have to keep Blizzard and Activision together or could they just be like, so. like theoretically they're not going to do this, but they, the day of, they could just be like, oh, you're all just Microsoft employees now your team 1183 your team 1422 yeah. like they could just do that if they wanted to so Obviously again very shaky understanding here but i believe that is typically codified or at least structured somewhat in the merger agreement where typically you have like the first 6 12 18 months in the merger agreement in terms of okay which executives are coming over which ones are leaving what's going to be in place but after that period that's been in the merger agreement the uh, at some point is probably going to be a free for all and they can make whatever decision they want. Okay. So we we don't know. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited, excited though. I'm excited. Um any I think that's I, well there's a there's a Black Panther game. Do we give a shit? Not really. I don't There's I don't so many there's too. so many superhero games that are just kind of out 
in the ether right now. I my brain can't really like I heard oh Black Panther game in development, and I'm like, was that not in development? Is this because I'm I just yeah. I can't keep track yeah. of all the stuff that's in the works. I it's just who cares, man. Marvel sucks, <laughs> and like even even the good Marvel game, which is Spider Man. I have zero excitement for Spider-Man 2 because to play a Spider-Man. <laughs> Cuz now that I watch it, I'm just like, "Oh yeah, I remember that Spider-Man game. Like it was cool, but it was very linear. <laughs> it was very like quick time event. Like it was it was a it was a fucking triple A Marvel video game, you know? And it was well done, and we don't get a lot of those. A lot of well done triple A superhero games. But at the same time, I walked away from it being like, "Yeah, it was okay." And, and I don't need another one of those. I, I just want to say, I doubt you're not going to get the map expansion you got in Tears of the Kingdom in Spider-Man 2. Like, that's not going to happen. No. How much so more of why, New York is there? I, right. I like, think, why I think do you get you, Queens, and that's it. Why, uh, Queens and Brooklyn. Again, we, I think we talked about this. Why not be like Spider-Man Hong Kong, Spider-Man Singapore? Yeah. Like, like, he's, he's, like, the movies did it. He's stuck somewhere else. Yeah, but that was like, the worst of the new movie well yeah but i'm just saying there's 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 a precedent to do it but i will say um, I, I i don't think you're wrong but i think you're barking up the wrong tree there daddy which is tears of the kingdom is largely the same map as breath of the wild yeah and it's not that it's got different areas of the map that it's exciting it's that there's shit that f- it's fucking cool in the map right yeah Spider-Man didn't have that, even in the original Spider-Man. All, all the majority of the rast, of the fucking world random events, etc., were like five different boring types, and they were all cookie cutter clones of each other. So adding a whole other area, in my mind, just says cool, more cookie cutter shit. So, like, it's not really putting them in a different place. You put them in. You put them on the fucking moon. You put Spider Man on the fucking moon. It's gonna have the same cookie cutter shit. Like I don't think the problem is the setting. I think it's how they fill the setting. <laughs> It'll just be dead on the next moon. week. Come back for Ian's pitch for Spider Man on the moon. Spider Man Moonfall. Spider Moon. Spider Man. He's got to. He's got to web it back into space. Actually, it would be Moon Spider. <laughs> moon Dash Spider. <laughs> God damn it! Can we end this shit already? Yeah. Get me out of here. Okay, great. Out, no one's watching this. We're literally just three men talking on a call. That's right. And all of our Thank you guys. Shut up! Thank you guys so much for watching us. Uh, we'll see y'all next time. We have been Local Chat. You can find us at Subpixel Team on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Mixer. You can find Will at Hunt270, Jake at underscore Jake Terrio, myself at Think Gibson on Twitter. Uh, we're going to be back on Sunday with some more Sunday shmup with Jake. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, Thank you to the... We got raided. There's 30 people watching live. We'll see y'all later. Bye. Bye.